Hello everybody, welcome to this InDesign tutorial in which I'm going to show you some tools and techniques so we can lay out a magazine template and have it look professional whilst we do it. I've already got my InDesign document open, it's just a basic A4 layout for print and I'm just going to show you how we're going to use a couple of tools to create a magazine layout. The tools we'll be using will be the type tool over here and the rectangular frame tool down here. Before we start, I'd just like to show you a couple of examples. This is a newspaper layout that I found online. And this is a magazine layout, which I also found. Although the two may look very different, the layout for these and the way that we create the layout is almost exactly the same. It's essentially images and words, and there's nothing more complex than that. The tools that we're going to use are fairly basic. The way in which we use them, you can be as creative as you like, and that's therefore challenging. The first thing we're gonna do is create text. So I'm gonna go on the type tool, click it, and then I'm going to click, hold, and I'm going to drag. This allows me to create a text box. I can create the text box any size I want. If you look in the bottom right, you'll see that it's got a width and a height option attached to it, which changes as I move the text box. If you've got a layout in mind and want to create a text box of a certain size to fit into a certain space, that's absolutely fantastic. For, this, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna create one this size. So now I've got my text box and I can type in pretty much anything I want into this, which is fantastic. However, it's gonna take me a while to type in. So I'm going to use a thing called placeholder text instead, which I'm just gonna copy and paste in now. I'm just gonna explain how placeholder text works. This particular placeholder text is called Lorem Ipsum. It's fairly famous. It's actually taken from Latin. And the reason why we use it as placeholder text is because not many people can actually read Latin anymore. Therefore, when we look at our text box, as you can see here, we're not focused on what the text actually says. We're focused on how it looks and how it works within the space that we have available. We're focused on things that don't quite work, such as the hyphenates that happen here. And we're focused on bits that may look a little bit odd. In particular, I'm sure you've already noticed that there is a box down here that's red and has got a cross through it. What this means is that there is too much image in this text box for us to work with. If I was just to stretch it out, you can see that now it does fit, but it also looks a little bit more untidy. We've got a lot of negative space here and it's too wide for the page. Therefore, we're going to use a technique called offsetting text. This is incredibly useful to do. All we do is we just click this little red box and suddenly you get all these doohickeys that come up around the cursor. What this means is I picked up the excess text and InDesign is looking for somewhere to place it. In theory, I could just click, but it's now created a big text box that looks radically different to this one. And that's not very professional. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this box by clicking on it, make sure I've got it by looking at my cursor and I'm going to click down here and I'm going to drag so now I have a text box the same width as the one above, as you can see by the green arrows that have just appeared to show me that it's aligned. Now I've got this, I can move it up here. You can see I've still got the red cross. I'm hoping if I move this down, there you go. The rest of that text from this paragraph is now over here in this text box. However, this isn't just a case of simply moving text from one box to another. If I chose to delete a section of this, you can see that the text from this box on the right moves into the box on the left. I'm gonna take a little bit less so you get the full impact of that. Essentially, these text boxes are dynamic. I can edit text, add text and remove text and the offset text in this text box will respond live and edit itself to ensure that it still works across these two boxes. 
Obviously, I can create multiple offset text boxes should I wish to. As an example, I'm just going to create another one just over here. And this text should now hopefully work across three text boxes. As you can see, it does, which is fantastic. When you're creating a magazine layout, having dynamic text that changes as you edit it is incredibly useful. Obviously, you might be doing editing in the, in the future, or you might go back and edit stuff. And that's fantastic to have these type of dynamic text boxes should you wish to do that, as it presents less problems in the future.